You know, in the tractor world, there's two kinds of guys. Those that have never had a problem in 20 years owning their tractor, and those of us that use our tractors. So which one are you? Guys, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. We are gonna cover the 10 most likely items that could break on your tractor. So whether that's a new tractor or a nearly new, mainly, you know, four or 500 hours tops or less, that's kind of what I sell, so that's what I'm most familiar with. I'm gonna give you an idea of the insight I've gained over the years with the hundreds and hundreds of used tractors that I've sold. What do I have to replace when I do have to replace something? In general, these are very robust tractors. You're not gonna have many issues to deal with. However, let's go over those most likely items to pop up. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below if you wanna get more helpful tractor videos. And if you're in the market for a tractor or a cool tractor attachment, read down below in that description all sorts of helpful links down there for tractor owners or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Here we go. We're going to go ahead and start with what I think is the most frustrating issue you could have. We'll save the most expensive for last. And I think you'll be surprised by a couple of items that didn't make the list. Underneath the hood, isn't that where all the problems start? But one of the common issues, maybe one of the most frustrating issues that you could encounter are gonna be wiring or ground or electrical issues going on. These kinds of issues can affect just the ability to start the machine. It could affect what you have going on or appearing on the dash. Maybe it's not gonna allow you to operate a PTO. A lot of different things crop up from electrical issues and there's just so many areas to look at and dissect and diagnose. That's why I think it's probably the most frustrating item on this list. Fortunately, not all that common. A real quick list of issues that I've had. Batteries are probably the most common, especially in fall and winter time. For some reason, the cold weather really seems to bring out those issues. So that's when I find myself replacing a lot of batteries. Grounding issues can be some of the most frustrating out of all the wiring issues. It's just a lot of testing to figure out exactly where that short is taking place. One really quick tip for you guys that have 3E tractors, like the 3032E, 3030E, 3025E, the rear PTO, the solenoid, when you pull the plug or push the button to activate the rear PTO, it's gonna have an electrical relay in there. That solenoid oftentimes will seize up if it's not used very often. So if you can find it, it's underneath the driver's seat, tap that solenoid there, the outside of it with a hammer or a wrench or something, whatever you can kind of fit inside there while you're cycling the switch on and off, that will free that up. Try to run those solenoids on a regular basis, even if you're not gonna use it, that could save a big headache. Okay, let's talk about lights now. You know, you have headlights, you got the ROP lights back here as well. Sometimes you just walk by these things and they just fall right off. It's really annoying. Be thankful it's not all that expensive. However, it is kind of frustrating, especially you John Deere owners that have lights like this on your ROPS bar. These things get smoked by branches and tree limbs and anything else as you're going through the woods or going through uh, the border of your property. Unfortunately, these don't have any protection, so they're gonna get knocked off pretty easy when you're going through the woods. It's a plastic section here that's holding on. You have, you have a bolt coming through the backside or two bolts, I should say. What you will find a lot of folks doing is just unbolting that, undoing the wiring. You have some harnesses on the backside and mounting these on the inside of the ROPS bar. You get a lot more protection that way. Now, sometimes you get lucky. All you have to replace are just the lens covers, which are maybe five or six bucks. That's not too bad. If you have to replace an entire section, it's around $90 to replace this chunk right here. Your headlights are another area that will break from time to time. You know, you have a grapple on front, you're going through brush, collecting brush, maybe pallet forks, that kind of thing. You poke a stick right through the headlight lens here. Sometimes they're gonna be fairly easy and reasonable to replace. Other times you have to get an entire fixture here, especially the Kubotas, a lot of those you have to get a whole fixture. These headlight assemblies are way more expensive than you would think. A little tangent, just this morning I was actually asked about this headlight right here. This is a classic style of 3032E. For some reason, this, this gentleman's John Deere dealer told him they could no longer get this light fixture. I found the part number online and just said, go ahead and Google it. There's a lot of places you can buy it from, but they've already outdated this fixture and they said that he was gonna have to splice in a new connector and headlight assembly. Go figure. So keep in mind, some of these can be self-inflicted kinds of issues, and some of them are just gonna happen because any machine is gonna have a usable life. It's gonna have wear parts. You're gonna have to expect to replace things at some point, whether it's by accident or just because they're gonna wear out. So next on the list are gonna be quick couplers like what you see here. Anywhere that you're gonna have hydraulics that can connect or disconnect, the most common area, because pretty much every tractor has it these days, are gonna be here where the loader is located because if you wanna take your loader on and off. However, on the larger tractors, 
like this one here, I don't take this loader on and off hardly ever. Most smaller tractors, like a 1025R or a 2 Series or a Kubota, Mahindra, any of those similarly sized machines, you might take your loader on and off more frequently if you're going to be mowing with it or maybe snow plowing or snow blowing, that kind of thing. So these couplers right here are going to see a lot more use. If you have something mounted on the front, like for a grapple or maybe rear outlets on the back, you're not going to disconnect and reconnect those outlets as often. So it's less likely you're going to have issues there. So hydraulic couplers for your loader are going to be the most common. In fact, I just had to replace one on my 1025R. Let's talk about mower decks. Not every tractor is going to have one, but those of you that do, there's a couple weak points on these mower decks that are more likely to see damage than other areas. Now, what can you do to prevent some of this damage? Well, number one, the reason these auto connect decks are so awesome is because it's really easy to take the mower deck on and off if you're doing other types of work with your loader or with the back end of your tractor. But these gauge wheels and these gauge arms and brackets on here, if you're doing those other types of projects with the mower deck on, it's likely that these are going to get bent or even broken off. And I don't care if it's a John Deere, Kubota, whoever it is, but I've seen these get welded back on. I've seen them be torn off. I've seen them completely tweaked. So something to keep in mind. One of the other annoying items is going to be these discharge chutes. These things are notorious for getting damaged, cracking, or just being really roughed up. But lots of times they will completely crack. You know, unfortunately, they're kind of expensive for what they are to have to replace. Somewhere in the $100 to $200 mark, depending on what it is. But I feel like they're a lot more money than they should be. Fortunately, they're an easy part to replace. However, keep in mind, if you're running into your landscaping fence posts, whatever it is, and thinking this is just gonna pop up and go back down, it will, but uh, you may pay for it in the long run. To a lesser degree, the mower deck spindles, most of the mower decks these days are gonna have three spindles, one tied to each blade. If you don't grease those things regularly, they will wear out, and they're also a fairly expensive item to replace. So keep in mind, they're all gonna have pretty easy access ports. Just grease them on a regular basis, once a week, once every couple weeks. Just do it on a regular basis throughout the mowing season. You'll be thankful you did. Now you guys know the best way to grease, right? Use a loop shuttle. Innovation in greasing, you get 5% off with code GWT, link down below. Seats, unfortunately, are one of those requirements. However, they can take a bit of abuse. As much as I love the John Deere yellow, this color does not do well over time if left to its own uh, devices. A lot of times what you'll do is you'll get mildew that starts to get all over here. If you have a tool or some other um, piece of steel that's in your pocket poking out, sometimes you'll end up cutting this vinyl that's on here as well. Same thing with the armrest. They are really nice to have, however, you'll see these break off chunks of foam, and this is just not a cheap thing to replace. In fact, if you have to replace the arm rack kit or the seat itself, you could be paying hundreds of dollars to do so. I don't really have a good solution to protect these armrests. However, I can tell you getting a pretty cheap seat cover is a decent way to at least protect your seat. You can wash those seat covers, reuse them. You still want to try to keep them dry and stored inside or you could get some mildew underneath, but it'll definitely help protect against those cuts and other abrasions. Now to a much lesser extent, I've had some issues with the springs or the steel that's on the frame underneath uh, the seat itself, whether that's going to crack or just maybe lose some hardware and break loose. So these suspension seats don't really take as much weight as I think they probably should. So it's fairly easy to reach that maximum. However, you can get upgraded uh, springs for this type of seat right here from bolt-on hooks. You know, I've also had cracked frames or missing hardware different issues pop up on an air ride seat that i had even the the wiring for that i guess going back to a wiring issue but that had an issue as well where something just got pinched underneath the seat itself and had to be repaired so a lot of things going on with seats more often than you would think okay so this one lots of times you don't need to fret about too much unless it's to the extreme but these hard lines right here that are uh, going across controlling the loader cylinders they're the hydraulic lines that have the fluid going through them there's some models of tractors out there including again i'm picking on the 3e series but they're not really going to have much protection at all to prevent damage from happening so if you're using a grapple or a set of forks and you have a bunch of brush on there or a log or whatever and some branches go through and tweak one of these lines here Fortunately, most of the time, it's not gonna cause any issues for you. You're still gonna be in the clear. If you wanna replace them, it could easily be a couple hundred bucks to do so. But most of the time, unless you're noticing leaks or some sort of a performance issue, you're gonna be okay. Now, most of the time, these tractors are gonna have pretty adequate protection uh, covers or maybe routing underneath the loader arms, different ways to really keep those hydraulic lines safe because you know they can get damaged fairly easily. But some models like the 3E series are gonna have primarily exposed lines. Now, one thing that just kind of really confounds me is the fact that most of these tractors, I don't care the brand, they have very chintzy, cheap 
hood guards or grill guards if you want to call it along with grill covers like this right here that are very easily damaged it just doesn't make any sense to me you know you're up near the business end where a lot of things are going on why not have better protection for everything underneath the hood you know but who knows maybe that's part of their master plan right is they know you're going to get a lot of damage up here on most tractors so let's make these parts here something you have to replace you're going to want to you're not going to want to leave it looking like it is so who knows maybe they're smarter than i am there now tractor tires are one of those areas that could be a combination of self-inflicted issues and sometimes just happening because you're using them right so an example of a self-inflicted issue could be with a valve stem right here now some valve stems are going to be covered and protected with a, a bit of a shroud around there i wish they all had that but for those that aren't i've done this myself i've been in the woods you know working it pretty hard trying to blaze a trail and front tire spinning kind of slide sideways right into a branch ripped the valve stem right off, my day was over. I had to head back uh, in and get the tire repaired. In that same kind of scenario though, you'll often see plugs that are in these tires. Most of them are gonna be tubeless. You can plug them, you can get by without having to replace the tire completely. It's a pretty cheap way to go about extending the life of your tire. Don't worry about the plugs. Even if you have to add air to them periodically, not really that big of a deal. Now you will notice those front tires are gonna wear typically a lot quicker than the rear tires are going to. And the reason being is they're taking a lot more of a load. They're a lot smaller tire too to begin with. So when you're using your front end loader a lot, so you have it loaded up with dirt or sand or rock, whatever the material is, it's a lot of weight and a lot of pressure you're putting on these smaller front tires. So it makes sense that they're gonna be wearing out quicker, especially if you're turning as well. You just kind of have to expect that typically you're going to get a lot more hours out of your rear tires than you will the fronts. Now fortunately I do have a couple of good solutions if you're looking for tires. MillerTire.com is going to be a great place to get all sorts of tractor tires if you need them. Doesn't matter what tractor you have or what style of tire you're looking for, they can probably help. You get 5% off with code GWT. I do want to mention what you see right here, the common tire sizes for the subcompact tractors, John Deere, Kubota, all that kind of thing. If you're looking for a very good value on both the wheel and the tire links down below or on my website where you can get a good combination for just the rears just the fronts but both wheel and tire just about cheaper than anywhere else so make sure you read that description below the last topic here are going to be leaks more hydraulic leaks or areas that it could leak potentially you know one of the not so common areas but it can happen are going to be on the the seals on the end of your cylinders here there's a lot of pressure behind there and if you have a lot of dirty applications or if you're leaving your tractor sit outside maybe over time and it gets uh maybe pitted or corroded or something maybe is debris that's hardened on here that could cause a cylinder leak and you may have to rebuild a cylinder end here that's really not that big of a deal and probably not going to happen for quite some time down the road but something to keep in mind a couple ways to prevent that from happening are going to be to fully retract your cylinder so there's no exposed rod when you're not using it and if you are going to be storing it for an extended period of time consider getting something to wrap or coat the exposed cylinder portions that cannot be retracted that's going to help prevent damage from happening i told you i was going to save the most expensive for last and that is going to be the front axle seals and now the seals in and of themselves are not all that much money oftentimes you can get a seal for about 50 bucks so if you have a few hours of time you can disassemble the front hub on either side and replace one of these seals pretty easily however if you need to take it into a dealer that's going to be a lot of labor involved and that is where the cost is really going to get driven up but a front axle seal is one of the most common things that i see on tractors and the reason being is again we've talked about it before but these front axles they're pretty tiny but they take a lot of weight with a front end loader especially when it's filled full of dirt in a bucket or if you're grabbing a log you're moving around on uneven terrain you're turning you're just putting a lot of a lot of pressure a lot of different forces on there and you're stressing these axles out man i tell you so that is one of the most common probably the most expensive of the common uh, issues that you're gonna have. So kind of plan on that happening at some point. Now, just because you see a puddle on the ground underneath one of these front axles doesn't mean your tractor's broken and you can't use it. As far as old tractors go, it's almost a rite of passage to have some sort of a puddle of fluid or oil underneath it. So you just top it off from time to time until you can get to it and get the repair done correctly. But it's just something that's kind of an indicator. You know you gotta get it fixed and corrected at some point. It's not the end of the world. However, on the list of likely things that could occur, I don't care what brand of tractor you have this is one of the most likely that's going to happen to you okay you can breathe a big sigh of relief a couple of the biggest hitters engine problems transmission problems you're really not going to experience those it is going to be a very rare case on these lower hour machines you know 500 hours and less and to be honest even a thousand fifteen hundred maybe two thousand hours 
that's going to be a rare occurrence. Once you get to the really high hour machines, which I consider thousands of hours, I've done a whole video all about it, that's when you may see transmission, engine issues, but you're really not going to have to worry about that. To put it in perspective, just like you need three or 5,000 miles on your car before you need an oil change, it's every 200 hours on a tractor. So think about that and, and kind of put it in perspective on how many oil changes do you think an engine might be able to go through? It's gonna be dozens and dozens, right, before you kinda of reach that useful life. So like anything else that's mechanical, maybe just budget a little bit, maybe a little slush fund there for a few hundred bucks a year just to kind of cover the unexpected repairs that might come up. And I know there's going to be comments down below because there always are. This does not matter if it's John Deere, Kubota, Massey, Mahindra, Coyote, I don't care what brand it is. There could be a bad apple among any manufacturer out there, it's going to happen. So if you read something bad about a certain model or series online, or maybe you had a bad experience with one tractor in particular, I wouldn't necessarily rule out the entire manufacturer. This is based on my experience of selling hundreds, if not into the thousands now, of used tractors over the years. Again, most of them are gonna be low hours, you know, 500 hours and less. So it's what I see with John Deere and Kubota mainly and a handful of others as well. If you like what you see here, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button right down below and don't forget to read through the description as well. All sorts of helpful links down there for tractor owners, a lot of cool tractor attachments, or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Thanks so much for stopping by. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.